Thanks for tuning in to another physics lesson with Mr. M. Uh, in this video, I'm going to cover um, a pretty common topic in, a, in the forces unit. It's called forces on an incline, um, also known as box on a ramp. And so what I want to um, do in this video is kind of break down all of the forces that you see in this diagram. Obviously, you got the box on this ramp. Um, a lot of different forces there in different colors and labeled all differently. So... I want to kind of break down how we get there. Before we do any of that, though, I want to start with the basics. So before we get to this, let's start with something very basic, and then we'll build our way up to that ramp. So let's consider a box on a level surface, so a box resting on the ground. And we're going to ask ourselves, what forces are acting on that box if it's just sitting at rest? Well, obviously we have gravity is always working. So gravity is always pulling down towards the earth. We call this um, the weight, okay? Weight is equal to mass times gravity. Sometimes this uh, force, instead of being labeled as the weight, sometimes it's also um, F with the little g, so like the gravitational force. Um, I personally like weight, but sometimes you see it both ways, okay? So gravity is pulling it down. The ground, however, is pushing back up on the box because if it wasn't, then the box would fall through the floor. And so obviously that's not happening. And so we have the floor is pushing back up on the box. Anytime the surface is pushing up on the object, we call that the normal force. And the normal force is represented as F sub lowercase n. And according to Newton's third law, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if a box is sitting at rest on a level, level surface, to find the normal force, basically what you would do is you would just find the weight because they are equal and opposite according to Newton's third law. All right. <clears throat> Let's say you were to try to push this box. All right, and say you push this box um, with a very small amount of force, and let's say it's a really heavy box. So we will call this um, we'll call this a push force. So F sub P. Okay, that's our push force. And if we push on this very lightly, the box isn't going to move. All right, and the reason why it's not going to move is because there's a there's friction force. All right, if you have something really heavy and you push on it lightly it's not going to move because there's friction, all right? So friction always um, opposes motion. And if you don't have enough force, whatever force that you're pushing it with is then equal and opposite to that friction force. To be specific, we would call that the static friction force. <clears throat> if you were to actually get the box to start moving, let's say that this push force was much greater than the friction force, we would then call that kinetic friction because the object is actually moving. Okay. So let's take that concept of a box on a level surface and let's take a look at how does that apply to when we have a box or an object on a ramp all right so let's say we have some sort of angle on this ramp let's take a look at all of the forces acting on this box okay once again gravity is always acting so we i once again like to call that the weight force weight is mass times gravity and it just turns out that when you have an object on an incline, we always have to kind of think in terms of the box on that incline. So what do I mean by that? If we were to draw the X and Y coordinate system for this box, we would draw it like this on the angle that it's on. So for example, the... Uh, you know, this coordinate should be perpendicular to the surface. So that would be like our Y coordinate. And then our X coordinate should be parallel to the surface. All right. So that's what I mean by our coordinate system. Because if you've learned, um, 
anytime you have an angled vector, you need to break it into its x and y components. And what happens here is that whatever angle your ramp is at, it just so happens that this angle right here from the gravitation, the weight force and the y-axis, these end up being the exact same angles. And so anytime you have an angled vector, you need to break it into its x and y components. And so if we go ahead and do that, this right here, this straight down the y-axis component would be adjacent to the angle here. And so anytime you have your vector adjacent to, we use cosine. And so if our hypotenuse, which is the weight force, is m times g, we call this cosine theta mg. Okay, actually, we call it mg cosine theta. I had that backwards. So we call that mg cosine theta. We should also have an opposite component. So the, the blue vector there was adjacent to our angle. We also have a opposite component of our triangle here. So like, once again, your x and your y components. So we call this vector mg sine theta because it's opposite of the angle. And instead of drawing it down here, we actually draw it up here. Okay, so that's where that comes from, and we call that one mg sine of theta. Now, let's go back to Newton's third law. Newton's third law says that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So, as the box sits on the ramp, right, it's on the surface of the ramp, the surface of the ramp is pushing back up on the box. And so that's how we get this to be called the normal force. And the normal force is equal and opposite to mg cosine theta. So that's something that's very important because that comes up a lot, mg cosine theta. So like if you have a box on a ramp and they're asking you in the problem to find the normal force, this right here is how you're going to solve that. Okay. Now, let's go back. We talked a little bit about friction when we talked about the box on the level surface. Sometimes in these problems, they might say that the ramp is frictionless. So anytime in any problem that it says frictionless, it means that you are not worried about friction at all. We are not going to draw that friction force on the free body diagram. If, however, they do tell you that there is a friction force then that's how we get the friction force here, okay? Because friction always opposes motion. If there is friction and they are asking you in the problem to maybe calculate the acceleration as the box goes down the ramp, what you have to do in that case is you have to um, utilize Newton's second law, which says that the net force is equal to to the mass of the object times its acceleration. So that kind of leads us to how do you find the net force in that case? Well, the net force is the sum of all forces in your free body diagram. And so if we're looking at the box on an incline here, we've already talked about how the normal force is equal and opposite to mg cosine. So those two forces cancel out we are not worried about this weight force because we've already broken it into its X and Y components. So we, that force has been already like transferred into mg sine and mg, cos, mg cosine. All right, so that we, we're almost kind of saying like that doesn't exist at this point either. So the net force is what you're left with. So if the box is going down the ramp, that would imply that mg sine theta is greater than your friction force. So your net force equation would be mg sine theta minus the friction force equals mass times acceleration. And so that 
is how you would end up solving for the acceleration of the box as it's going down the ramp. If it were frictionless, then we would just kind of get rid of the friction force here and it would just be mg sine theta equals mass times acceleration. All right. I know that was a lot of information in one video, but that is my best explanation of how we break down all of the forces that are present for a box on a ramp, also known as forces on an incline. As always, uh, thanks for tuning in, and I hope that this has helped you solve your own physics problem.